This short video will explore the Harvard system of referencing and its use at Birmingham City University. There are three areas I want to briefly touch upon. The first is a very basic question of why we need to reference at all in our writing. Then I want to talk about the technicalities of actually doing referencing within your writing what I'll from here on in refer to as citations. And then finally, how we construct a reference list at the end of your writing. OK, so first up, why do we need to reference at all? Well, there are several reasons we could go through. Here are just a few. First one I want to mention is an idea of giving credit where it's due. These aren't your ideas that you're writing down, but other people's that you've come across in your reading and you're expressing them to your own level of understanding, but you certainly want to give credit where it is due. Other people will therefore have that much more confidence in your claims rather than it just being seen as your opinion. It also implies, of course, that you've been careful in checking your facts. You've taken the trouble not just to remember a piece of information, say from a lecture or from a book, but to go back to that primary source and find out exactly who said what, where and when. You can also think of referencing as evidence where you've gone beyond the reading list. Of course you'll use the reading list from any given module or lecture but you might also be able to find information beyond there as well uh, which of course starts to give you more credit. The currency and the appropriateness of your evidence, of your references, will also be an important factor as well in uh, giving confidence in, uh, in your markers for example. Uh, also, your readers, maybe even your, yourself as well, can follow up on the work, follow up on the ideas that you've been exploring if they want to take it further. And last but not least, it ensures you against charges of plagiarism. And what we mean by this is if you don't cite, if you don't mention in your writing where you've taken it from, it could be construed that you are passing off other people's ideas of, as your own. Now, there are some others that we could have included in there, but I think that covers the basics. OK, now let's look at quality of referencing. And here's two short student pieces of writing. Speech therapists work with patients suffering with language problems and swallowing difficulties. They will work with other members of the health profession, such as nurses and doctors, and also with teachers. This is quite a reasonable sentence and looks okay. They've taken a reference from Wikipedia 2010 and they've given what appears to be a pretty bona fide reference. There's a problem with this, however, and that is that in this case, Wikipedia isn't a peer reviewed um, source. It is a online, uh, essentially website that anybody can, in theory, uh, edit. Therefore, it's level of authority isn't as secure as, for example, a piece of published material like a textbook or a journal article. And therefore, in, there may be some inaccuracies in here which the student hasn't picked up on but may exist. For example, notice that the Wikipedia page is called Speech Language Pathology. Well, that's an American phrase referring to the profession. And indeed, the phrase speech therapist is now out of date uh, with regards UK profession. Here's another example. The primary specialist working with communication and swallowing disorders and the associated difficulties that service users may experience are speech and language therapists. They will naturally form part of an interprofessional team and will often be assisted by speech and language therapy assistants and bilingual co-practitioners. Now the citation here is to the RCSLT, the Royal College of Speech and Language Therapists. Now that is uh, an official organisation that governs speech and language therapists uh, and therefore we can have more faith in its accuracy. For one thing, it gives a more up-to-date title to the profession um, and it is by definition, because it's a large organisation and a professional body, it is going to be a peer reviewed article. So it's not always that obvious from writing but it will start to become obvious from your citations, from the quality of your references whether what you're taking is peer reviewed or not. And ultimately 
it is reflected in the quality of the information so it is very very important not just to think, think about the quality of your own writing as an academic style for example but also in the quality of those references that you bring to bear okay now let's think about the technical aspects of including references in your own academic writing there are two places you will need to include references in your assignment there'll be what we call citations references which occur within your writing itself and there'll be the references that occur in a separate list at the end of your writing now citations are references to other people's work where you've explored their ideas either as a paraphrase where you put their ideas into your own words or if you've used their ideas as a direct quotation in both cases they're not your ideas they're not your concepts you're discussing so for both paraphrase and quotation you need to give a citation within your writing so for example for a paraphrase a citation might look like this very brief just the author's surname and the year and depending on the structure of the sentence which we'll come on to in a moment the author's surname may be outside or inside the bracket the year of publication is always inside the brackets it's a little different for a quotation a direct quotation because here and only here not only will you give the author and the year but also give the page number there's still this open question about whether the author goes outside or inside the brackets but both the year and the page number go inside the brackets okay let's explore which one of these we will have to do at any given time it comes down to the structure of the sentence so for example if the author's name you feel needs to be read out loud as it were it, it forms a natural part of the sentence then the author's name will go outside the brackets and only the year will go inside the brackets so for example in the following sentence if I read this out loud without voicing what's in the brackets it makes perfect sense Roberts argues that communication is a key area of concern if I was tempted to put the author's surname inside the brackets it would not have made sense reading out loud while omitting what's inside the brackets for quotation for example um, you could say Roberts says that communication will always be regarded as paramount and is a primary concern in the trust so again it made sense to use the author's surname overtly it therefore goes outside the brackets okay well what, what about if the author's name does not necessarily form a natural part of the sentence in that case both author's name and the year will go inside the brackets here's an example research has shown that communication is a key area of concern or for a quotation communication will always be regarded as paramount and is a primary concern in the trust now what you may have spotted is that the author's surname will go inside the brackets if it has occurred at the end of a sentence and outside the brackets if the citation has occurred at the beginning of the sentence it's not quite so straightforward as that because very often you will want to put a citation during a sentence and then we'll, therefore we'll have to think about its natural um, position whether it requires going outside or inside depending on whether you feel it needs voicing or not one other thing I want to mention about citation is secondary referencing. If you haven't been able to access the primary source, but you want to discuss somebody's ideas and they've been mentioned in, for example, a second textbook, then your citation will look something like this. You'll have the name of the person whose idea you're discussing comes first, in this case Connor, who published something in 2010, but it was cited in the book you found, for example here, cited in D. 2014 so here Connor gives several clear examples of referencing those same rules of outside or inside the brackets are still relevant here there's quite a bit of structure going on here and this is a departure from previous versions of the Harvard system of referencing at BCU in your reference list at the back only in this case the one by D 2014 we're going to mention not the Connor 2010 in the in your list at the back it is only the primary sources that you access the sources you held in your hand as it were that get uh, mentioned in the list 
OK, finally let's think about the list of references that occur at the end of your writing. Well, here's a typical reference list. Now, what do we notice about the structure of this list? Well, we notice that it's in alphabetical order. It's in alphabetical order by author or organisation responsible. So some of these are people's names, Barlow, and others are organisations like the British Heart Foundation or the Department of Health. They're all mixed in together. In fact, while we're on the topic of a mixing in, books, journal articles and websites all get mixed in together. They are not separated out in a reference list. What else can we see about the structure? Well, once the author's out of the way, we then are given the year of publication. Then we're given the title of the book or the website or the journal article and then finally we're given some information about where this has come from. It may have come from a website, it may have come from a textbook or it may have come from a journal article etc. But there are subtly different rules regarding the structure of a reference that you would therefore just to be sure would need to check the Harvard referencing guidelines that are available on ICT. But just to give you some idea of, of the subtle different rules, let me walk you through two or three. For example, if we're referencing books, here's an example of a book reference in your reference list. It starts off with the author, followed by maybe one or two initials. Notice you don't know from this the gender of the author, because it doesn't give full forenames. Then you have the year, and then because it's a book, in italic we have the title of the book. Then we have to give the place of publication, followed by the publisher. If there's more than one place of publication given in the inside cover of the book, then you would typically choose the one closer to home, as it were, closest to where you are studying. OK, now let's look at another one, journal articles. The structure is not too dissimilar. Again, it starts off with an author or organisation responsible and maybe some initials, then the year, and now not in italics, but in normal font, the title of the article. What is in italics? Is the name of the journal which published this article and then you have some curious numbers which in this case are the volume number in which the um, publication came in the issue number as well as the page range or pages in which that article occurred this has got nothing to do with whether you did a direct quote or not it simply provides the reader with enough information to go in and, and locate accurately that particular article perhaps in a, a library's reference section OK, finally I want to look at an example of an internet page and again the structure is not too dissimilar. You start off with the author, in this case it's the organisation responsible, then the year, and now in italics, back to italics, the title of the page, of it, the, the title of the website. And then you have the URL, in other words the web address in which it was uh, accessed, and then curiously you have the date at which that particular website was accessed. Now the reason this is insisted upon is because unlike printed material where it is fixed as it were web information by its nature can change and so giving a date in which you as the writer of this uh, assignment accessed it at least locks it saying it was live at that time okay I hope that was of some help uh, finally I just want to show you uh, a couple of uh, links which you if you haven't got access to them already you need to have access to both the short and fuller Harvard referencing guidelines from BCU so those links are there for you to access those if you don't have copies yourself thanks very much